guys. I just want to let you know that I was woken up out of my sleep. Jesus is coming very soon, and I just have to tell you that that you have to repent and you have to come to him. He woke me up to tell you that he's coming soon. Like, this is serious, whether you believe it or not. Please listen to me and please come to him because he's calling for his children. <laughs> Our bridegroom is coming and you have to be prepared and your oil lamps need to be full. I'm sorry, I don't normally do this, but I just have to tell you I've got to reach as many people as possible. <laughs> I come on here, I don't care how I look. I don't, I don't care if you believe or not. It's going to happen. <laughs> and I don't want anyone to be left behind. So please, even if this message could reach one person, please repent. Shalom, shalom. Call the lawyer in law. Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Kakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, a great Muslim, to teach him a world. Peace and salutations be to the Lord for the elect. I am Brother Talzam Kabar, coming at you from the Prophet 7 Babylon camp here in Tampa, Florida. This is going to be going into this woman's urgent message. She woke up from a night, you know, a dream of the night, night vision. <laughs> right, let me grab it. Job 33 and 15, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men and slumberings upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction, that he may withdraw men from his purpose and hide pride from men. Okay, so when deep sleep falleth upon men, the Lord is opening your ears and, and pouring that information into you. <clears throat> And this is how you experience uh, what we call spiritual dreams. You know? And Jay be waking up affrighted. You know, the prophets received a lot of these dreams. Uh, where they, they made them sick. How terrifying these dreams were. You know? Um, let me grab this in Acts. Chapter 2 and verse 17, and it shall come to pass in the last days, because it's not just the men of the Lord that's having these dreams about the Lord's return. Okay? It's everybody. And this woman was probably uh, a Christian or something. Uh, you know? This woman here was probably a Christian. Because she had knowledge about the lamps, she had knowledge about the bridegroom. So, you're probably a Christian or something, man. But I don't know. You know, I'm just speculating. But these people that call themselves religious or seem to seem to be religious, they're going to see it first. You know, they're going to see um, dreams about the Lord, you know, just pulling up on the ass and taking lives. You know, anybody that's, you know, seeking to serve a higher power. They're seeing these visions. Okay? And these visions are terrible. I mean, these ain't uh, peaches and cream visions. These ain't visions about um, hugs and kisses and Teletubbies. No, man. These are uh, very stern visions. The Lord is putting his spirit out. And uh, that's why he said, And I shall come to, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith the Abba Shemel I will pour out of my spirit upon, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh because now you're having all these other nations having dreams as well and these people always in the video crying boo boo crying like the lord hurt their feelings in their sleep which he did man you know because he's showing you the truth and the truth uh stranger than fiction man you know so these people normally dream about fucking ran they normally have random dreams about just jack shit and nothing you know about random things, or maybe about work, maybe about friends they used to know, friends they want to know, celebrities, 
is people have ra- regularly, you know, random dreams like this. But they don't have dreams or your sky is cracking open and all hell is breaking loose and a dark skinned man is descending out of that, that you know, that chariot and putting a lot of people to death, man. They don't normally have dreams like that. That's something that's odd. But these aren't dreams, these are messages, man. The Lord is pouring his spirit up, out upon all flesh. So even the woman going to dream, you know, it's why it says, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And it's not meaning like prophesy, like get on the streets and actually prophesy, but what they're prophesying is their dreams. When they tell their dreams, that's a prophecy. This woman was just prophesying just by telling her dream on a video, man. You know, when the, the daughters prophesying is when they tell their dreams to the fathers. And the fathers express it or explain it. And they may be, uh, so a lot of the times, maybe prophets, daughters of the prophets, but all flesh going to get it, man. You know, whether they be heathen, Edomite, you know, Jake, all, everybody going to see, okay, the Lord is about to pull up, man. Something ain't right. The Lord is about to pull up. Okay, and it's in this lifetime. It's not going to take forever. Um, that's what I'm going to grab, though it tarry. Because this woman seemed extremely distressed, man. It says, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Okay. And this, these ain't no Martin Luther King dreams. These are when you fall asleep and you're in a deep sleep, and you're expecting to get a peaceful, peaceful night of rest before work tomorrow, a long day of work tomorrow. And you know wake up in the middle of the night, at 3 a.m., and cold sweats, and your heart pounding in your chest, and you... You're sore afraid because this dream the Lord put into your mind while you're sleeping, man. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out the I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So those that are in the truth as well are gonna be prophesying. It says, and I'll shoot. You know that's good. That's it on that. Let me grab have a quick two and three for the vision is yet for an appointed time. So this, there's an appoint, there's an appointment the Lord has with the earth. The Lord has an appointment with the world, and the world has an appointment with the Lord. And that day is coming fast. That's gonna be an appointment. You know, you go to an appointment. Um, you go to an appointment at a doctor's office or something, like that, and you know it's a, a grievous appointment. You think and anybody tell you, oh, you you got three months to live, six months to live. Okay, it's one of those grievous appointments, man. Okay, this is um, the Lord's appointment. For you, the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So though it take no, though it's gonna take some time, wait for it. It's it's, it's worthy. It's, it's worthy enough to wait for. Okay, this is the greatest day that you will experience ever. Okay. That's why I said wait for it. You know how you want to wait for a movie to come out. You want to wait for um, that game to come out. You know, and you have patience waiting for it. You go, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait to this happen. I can't wait to this happen. Well, you don't want to wait for this. And how do you wait? You pay, waiting, you got to have patience. And patience goes into suffering. And this is only talking to those that are truly seeking to serve the Lord. Um, suffer, man. Suffer for it. Because what? In that day, you're going to be redeemed from the earth. In that day, you ain't going to have to be uh, catching all hell. Okay? But you're going to be taken care of. The Lord going to beam you up. And you're going to be all right, man. Um, i got this for you unbelievers. Book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord, El Bashamel Shai. To what end is it for you? You know, you got these wicked ass niggas. Oh man, I can't wait till this world end. Oh, the world's gonna end. Sweet, dude. Especially these eating mice, man. These eating mice look at that like a fucking a skate park. Like they're gonna be riding the skateboard to hell. Or like that ghost, ghost rider game. They look at it like they're gonna be riding a motorcycle in, in the gates of hell or 
And not only that, a lot of these wicked niggas and wicked, you know, heathens are obsessed with the idea of hell. You know, they make memes about um, something funny, which is not really, which is, uh, they make memes about something funny, which is actually disrespectful. And then, then the video, it shows them in hell burning. And they're just like, oh, man. Or it shows the meme, show them in hell boxing demons. Okay? And they think this shit's funny. All right? They gonna, that's why the Lord going to EMP this shit. He's going to knock this shit loose. And he's going to make all hell break loose while this shit knock loose. Because he ain't going to be able to make memes about how how funny it is to be in Jacob's trouble. How much suffering you're going to have in Jacob's trouble. Nobody going to be making memes in that day. All right? You ain't going to be able to record. You ain't going to be able to call up your loved ones from across the country, from across the world, okay? The Lord is going to uh, shake this place with a mighty hand, all right? Shit's going to be all knocked out of order. You're going to be stuck like Chuck, man, okay? The Lord's going to bring everything down upon you heavily. You're going to rain on your parade. That's a saying, raining on your parade. Oh, don't rain on my parade. Don't be a party pooper. Well, guess what? The Lord is going to be the ultimate party pooper because they living it up here right now. And the Lord's about to come and... Uh, you know, really drop bombs on y'all ass, man. You gonna poop bombs on y'all. Okay, that's the poop. That's these damn nuclear missiles. <clears throat> Especially here in Babylon, man. Okay, this, uh, if you see the movie Babylon, it's literally Babylon in a nutshell. It's just a great, one great big ass sodomite party, man. Okay, one, um, uh, big ass party of confusion. Everybody partying, doing all sorts of wickedness. They don't even know what they're doing anymore. Okay. It says, to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord, Yah Basham Yoshai, is darkness and not light. It's a dark time. This is, uh, like they say, uh, it's going to be a, a cold winter or a dark winter. That means uh, uh, troublesome times are coming. That's a cold word for troublesome times. All right, the day of the Lord is going to be troublesome. It's not going to be good for you. Okay, it's going to be a time. Uh, scripture says in Timothy, in the last days, perilous times shall come. So it's going to be a dangerous time, a time where you're hoping to live the next day. You're hoping to see the next day, and you're going to have others that are hoping to not see the next day. <laughs> you know? This is the kind of time we're coming into, man. Oh, man, I don't want to live. I don't want to live. My folks are going to be hungry, starving. Okay. And then they're going to try to escape the hunger. And somebody going to pull up on their ass by, while, while they're eating and gun their ass down. Leave them on the floor to bleed out. You know, they may shoot them in all the unvital spots, but they, gonna, they ain't going to be able to move. They're going to be left on the floor. And, you know, while they was just taking a bite out of that motherfucking, uh, out of a big ass piece of chicken, whatever it may be. They're just taking a bite. They're going to get gunned down, left on the floor to bleed out and starve still. And they're going to eat the food. You know, they're going to take the food out of their mouth and eat it. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of trouble sometimes you're coming into, man. But it's going to be dangerous out here. You know, that's why the scriptures say in Ezra, uh, he that escaped the hunger shall the sword destroy. If a man, it says, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him. So you're going to escape one problem and you're going to meet another problem just as great. If not greater. Or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and the serpent bit him. You know, this is going to be, uh, that just goes to show you, you're not going to be able to escape the tribulation. The troublesome times you're coming into, you're not going to be able to escape them. You're going to have people hiding out in bunkers. All right, well, the Lord going to smite your food with a mold, a mildew. Okay, you're going to have, uh, your, your food going to expire fast, you know, or, you know, something's going to get down there. They're going to get into a bunker, and a beast going to break down there with them. Break into that door without going in. And devour their ass and all their food. You know, the beast may halfway or partway devour them. And they're going to watch as the beast eats their food. You know, the Lord going to take them take their ass out with a sickness. And it spreads. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know... A servant of the Lord stumbles upon that bunker and walks on, wobbles on in there, sits down, and has rest, man. That's how much uh, scriptures say here. Um, 
Isaiah 65 and 13, thus, Therefore thus saith the Lord, Yahabashim Yashad, Behold, my servant shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Because the Lord's going to kick you out of that joy seat and put the prophets and the servants of the Lord in, that, in, those, in those joy seats and put you into tribulation. Because now we are suffering. All right, right now we're going through it. Right now um, uh, we're mourning and they're rejoicing. But guess what? The table is about to flip. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart. How happy you got to be to be singing. <laughs> you know? Um, you know how Jacob be hungry all day and they finally get some food and they just a dancing and shit. Um, how much more singing, man? You know, for sorrow, it says, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart Woo! and shall howl for the vexation of spirit. So we've been howling for vexation of spirit. We've been vexed constantly day in and day out. We vexed with the filthy uh, conversation of the wicked. We vexed with the wickedness going on in Babylon. All right. But the Lord is about to take the vexation away, put us somewhere, stow us away somewhere in a safe place and with food and entertainment. While outside of it, it's going to be hell, death and destruction going on, consuming a place. You know, you may open the door of the bunker just to look at, just to see Edom might die real quick. You know, we can close that bitch back up, go back down and chill with family, man. You know, until the Lord comes and picks us up and says... Um, back in Amos 5 and 20 it says shall not the day of the Lord Yahabashimiel Shai be darkness and not light even very dark and no brightness in it so it's going to be very troublesome man there ain't going to be a time of uh, rejoicing it ain't going to be a, a something that you can make memes about you ain't going to laugh about shit in those days you're going to be losing family you're going to be losing yourself <laughs> you know this is the kind of time we're coming into, yet there you still see a party going on. Nobody's taking heed to the warnings. Nobody's taking heed to the warnings. Okay? So when that day comes, uh, like Elder Pastor Gabar, like, you know, he says, when words don't teach, adversity will. You know, it's the time to talk now, but when that ass one come, don't try to repent in the middle of the ass whooping. Jake always trying to repent in the middle of the ass whooping. You know, I I speak for experience from experience. I always be young and I'll be doing some some uh disobedient shit. And in the middle of the ass whooping I'm saying, I'm sorry, I'll never do it again. I'm repenting to my parents. Repenting to my dad, repenting to my mom, gonna my mom get my ass whooped. I'll never do it again. Please spare me, please spare me, you know. Please spare me the rest of this ass whooping. Okay, but I never got spared the rest of that ass whooping. No matter how much I pleaded for it, it's going to be the same for you, Jakes, for you wicked ass Jakes. You are not going to be acquitted of your judgment in the midst of judgment. Now is the time to get redemption from that judgment. OK. That's why it says. Uh, right here. In the book of um, Romans 13, verse 11, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. All right, now is our salvation nearer than when we believed, man. It's high time to wake out of sleep. You know how it's, um, uh, any business always gets peak hours or peak time. That's what, that's what we're in right now is the peak time to awake out of sleep. All right. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light.
All right, man. That looks like um, it's closing time. I'm gonna close it down with uh, I believe Zephaniah. Zephaniah 1 14. Yes. This book of Zephaniah chapter 1 verse 14. The great day of the Lord, Yahweh Shemiel Shai, is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, Yahweh Shemiel Shai, the mighty men shall cry there bitterly. So that day of the Lord is a great day and it's hasting greatly, meaning it's speeding up. Every day is coming quicker and quicker. You know, what you think would have took in another thousand years, it actually might take another five years, man. You know, Maybe less than that. It might take another few months. All right. We are already seeing shit breaking. Um, things collapsing and breaking down for our very eyes. You know, the Lord say it is even at the doors. All right. But I truly hope this lesson was edifying to you. I'll keep it not listening to the sincerity. To next time, Mr. Rala, I give all glory, honor, praises unto Yahweh, Bahashmi, Oshai, Bahashmi, Kakwadash. Shalom.